What's up? <laughs> Brett, are you on here? Go ahead and start us off. Yeah, okay. Coach, obviously, you guys got the series win at Duke, and I know Sunday probably didn't go the way you wanted, but to get the series win up there, just how would you evaluate the, the weekend that you guys had against the Blue Devils? Proud of the way we played. Um, their arms and their offensive physicality and capabilities are really, really tough. They run arm after arm after arm, righties, lefties. I thought I counted – maybe nine or 10 mid nineties arms, the pitchability, uh, just the fundamental way that they play the game, um, damaging offense. When you make mistakes, great series win for us. Um, just proud of the guys, you know, Jamie, I thought threw the ball really well. Dorsey again, solid and enough out of the pen at critical moments to get it done. You know, I know Sunday didn't didn't go our way. At the end of the day, you escape a really, really good team um, and win two of the three games. So I was very proud of the guys and kind of led us into exams. And um, you walk out of there Sunday knowing you did not play a good game. We did not pitch well. We did not defend. Um, even though we jumped on it early two to nothing, like it, it clearly wasn't in the cards. But this gave us a nice week to to reset a little bit and get some of the the guys some rest that need it, and maybe some of the pitchers that rarely get to throw side work pins and side sessions with Micah. It gave us a chance this week to to touch and feel the mound a little bit outside of the repetitive in game stuff that you have to deal with, especially out of the bullpen. So I'm just I'm proud of the way we played that that weekend. It was tough. They're very Duke is very very good. Hey, Link, you're you're in position as a team to uh, to secure a, a top eight national seed if you all take care of business here in May. Um, I, I guess first part, what does that mean to you all? And then second, do you think the NCAA selection committee takes that into account, you know, how you finish, or, or is it more of a body of work, RPI type of thing? What do you think is important in the committee's view? Well, you're not going to be a top eight seed if you don't, start the season well like you you can get buried early in the season you have to start to finish play the game properly and play well and hopefully you can stay healthy make no mistake that's part of it um so if you come out of the gates and are on point and have things organized in a way that the guys understand what they're getting into you manage the weekends you manage some tough midweek games. There's no breathing room in the middle of the week. You have to do it start to finish. And we're on that track. Like we're not finished. You have to finish. And to be one of those seeds is important. You know, it gives you a chance to obviously be at home for a regional and hopefully you're at home for a super regional. Your goal is getting to Omaha. And the best way to get to Omaha would be to play those postseason series here. I think I played in probably two of the most difficult, if not the two most difficult. It's not easy to go to some of these places to win Super Regionals in Starkville and Knoxville. And, um, you know, clearly the pathway that is most conducive is to do that stuff here. So when you start the first game of the season, you're hoping you're in the discussion at this point. Being in the discussion at this point is just that. You're in the discussion. You have to go play. And – NC State is a – they have dynamic pieces. They've got experienced arms, a balance of lefties and righties, mid-90s fastball guys, not easy. Like every one of these things feels like it's a super regional. Duke was that way. This is going to be that way. So you just have to continue to respond and answer and try to play well, and hopefully you're as healthy as you can you can hope to be at this time of year. Link, y'all, uh, y'all, y'all lead the ACC in slugging percentage. I think you're in the bottom five or so in in strikeouts and walks at the plate. Aggressiveness is definitely a part of the approach. How do you balance wanting to be aggressive, wanting to knock in a leverage count? Well, also, I think there have been a few times this year where maybe you've let a, a pitch count of a, other pitchers stay low because you're almost being too aggressive. Well, from Kurt, you know, I, I see the personality of this team, and when you look at the personality of the team that's comprised of how these different hitters go about their business. And 
there are some guys that are just so distinctly different in how they manage the at-bats. And I've had that in a lot of the teams that I've coached through the years. Some guys are a little bit more eager early in the count, whether that's just a byproduct of their overall pitch selection and vision of what they see. Um, some guys can get away with that because of their physical strength. Then you have other guys that seem to work through the count more often. And, you know, there there are a few guys that we clearly have to try to improve the overall pitch selection, which will improve the approach. There's other guys at this point in their career and where we are in the season that you just try to have minor comments and minor discussions, but their personality and how they go about it gives you some variety. And if it's not a glaring weakness, sometimes you just let these guys play their game and – you see that at the major league level. There's very different types of, of successful offensive players. I do like the balance we have. Clearly, like we've talked about since this season started, we do get a little bit reckless at times, and you'll chew through some innings with five, six pitches in some cases, but you've seen those same guys hit balls in the trees and have incredible at-bats and do damaging things. So I think you have to just manage that delicately this time of year and focus on the guys that clearly need to make some improvements with that. And um, you just get a little bit greedy and hope that everybody can, can keep getting better. You mentioned link uh, some guys getting a few pitches in there and then having to, to move along <laughs> and through two pitches on Sunday, got you out of the end. Was that just the, the plan all along or did something maybe go awry in his rehab there? It just didn't look great. Um, you're talking about Barrett, right? I lost you there. Is yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah? Um, you know, the velocity is on these scoreboards basically everywhere we play now. So when when we're expecting A and we get B, you know, it was a little concerning. So we felt like that was enough. We we wanted to get him in that game. We had to get him in that game. I know that game wasn't <laughs> headed in the right direction, but we were trying to get him in there and we did, and it just didn't quite look like we had seen it. Now this week in, in the lab and doing some of his work, it looked more like what we had seen than it did at Duke. So when you've gone through this rehab, which we were very cautious with it, when you get out in a, in a game like that for the first time, I, I think you need to knock the rust off a little bit and just, settle in and and pitch coming off an, an injury. So it was better this week. Uh, and I hope it just with repetitive, he felt fine just with some opportunities to get back out there. I think the comfort returns and I think we see the velocity and the breaking ball continue to tick up a little bit to where we have been accustomed to seeing it. Get a, can I ask a follow-up on, on Cam and Connor? How are they progressing for you? Connor's coming along a little more quickly than than lighter, but it's all positive. Like we don't have any huge concern right now. Like there would be no more discussion if there were massive concerns with this. Now there are concerns because you've got two talented pitchers that that haven't been out there in quite some time. So you hope you get them back. Their health and safety is first then their ramp up is second and then back out there is third and it's got to stay in that order and we're not going to we're not going to push them they both want to get out there they're at different phases of things um wit's going to ramp it up pretty good this weekend and then we'll know more after he jumps on that mound and really opens it up in his bullpen where we stand with him can you let your mind wander at all link to thinking about what they could be for you in june or is that not something that's even in your mind right now it's in my mind. It's in my mind because we saw what it could look like. Like you, you reflect on that and you know, those, I see those guys every day. I, now you have to manage without them, but I do think about what that could look like. It's a pretty special group. And then it freshens the bullpen a little bit because you, you, you shorten it. You would think in terms of their workload, but the reality of it is they're with us in the dugout right now and they're not they're not out on that mound. So I, I know what it could look like. 
I know what it did look like. But the reality of it is that we you go with what you have and tomorrow we go with what we have. And do we ever get to the point where they're fully back in the equation? I, I can't answer that. I know Cam's been traveling. I don't know if Connor has. You talked about they're in the dugout, I guess. Is there a val- – how valuable are they, even if it's not on the mound, of maybe what they can tell other pitchers, what they're seeing, I mean, just their insight from their experience? Yeah, they're great. You know, Whitaker's a captain. Cam's a very – you've seen the energy and the fire. Cam's got that fire in the dugout. Whitaker kind of manages the younger guys and helps us with the pregame. I When I hit infield, outfield, he's my calming factor out there, and he's always out there with me, and he feeds me balls, and that may seem like – some little league stuff, but he's just a calming presence, which is very helpful. And lighter is a little bit more of a powder keg of energy in the dugout. So it's a good balance. So we, they haven't been able to travel both on all the trips, um, but, you know, clearly they'll be here this weekend and that's fun and it's good to have them around and their rehab stuff and their throwing and, their buildup is is easier when they're with us. It just hasn't worked for each one of them to go on all the trips. But different type leaders, both leaders. With those guys being out, how how big has has Carson given you six six innings in back to back weeks? Just how valuable has that been, Brad? It's game changer, man. Um, and they're good innings. We we tried. You you guys could see how we built this early on, and with Dorsey's deception and some of the things that he does we thought he would be that good leverage guy out of the bullpen um you saw some moments where it seemed to be working i think we know he it's a little more familiar with him the starting role and i think he's he's done well with that but it has saved it saved those weekends for us in terms of the workload of the pen had it not gone well with him I'm not saying we couldn't have survived, but it sure does make things a lot easier and allows you to go into a midweek game if your starters chew up some innings. Clearly, guys are going to be more fresh when when you get to Tuesday, and Tuesday matters. I don't think Tuesdays matter any more than when you look at the landscape of the country right now and what happens in some of these games. It, It matters. And those Tuesdays early on when our starting pitching was intact, those Tuesdays mattered too. So... His ability to deepen and lengthen has helped us on that particular day. But the fallout of that has just been exceptional to to helping some of these other guys freshen up. Link, was there anything from Yoel on on Sunday that seemed real uh, that he can build off of for you guys here down the stretch? It was as good as I've seen him throw. Um, And it was not a stressful leverage moment. But the confidence that he gets – when he goes out there and fills it up. And I think sometimes the velocity is a little bit reflective of the confidence and how they feel. And once you start to see, Hey, I did this and I'm going back out again, three days later. And I just did this again, that energy and confidence, sometimes everything gets a little bit better. And it's the chicken or the, which came first. Is it you gain confidence from being good or are you good gaining? I think after how he started, he needed to go out there and feel good a few times and it seems to be on the right track. I mean, it's 95, 98, and uh, that slider can be good, and the split can be pretty good. He just hasn't thrown a whole heck of a lot at Florida or here. But we're moving the needle. Like, it is, it is clearly moved forward, which is a good sign. Coach, thoughts about um, getting a chance to face your son, who's on the, on the baseball staff. I don't know. Have, have you guys um, discussed about um, seeing each other? Oh, yeah. Um, there's a there's a lot that goes into this. You know, he played there for five years and that was the only space, I, I believe, in his life where he spent five years, maybe Greensboro. We might have gotten five years there before he left. But NC State's a special place to him. And my wife, like her, the teammate parents that she got to know for those five years really really a neat moment and having to coach against him at Notre Dame. I can't explain those feelings. It's really uh, something I can't describe as to what it feels like when he's standing in the box and you're, you're trying to get him out 
and the magnitude of the games, you know, th these are national ramifications. And we live through that. Um, pretty cool. And now this is unique. So um, Elliot Avent and Chris Hart and Scott Foxhall and then Clint Chrysler, they they gave him such a great opportunity. And Elliot's, Elliot's so unique. I, I think back to two instances where what makes Elliot one of the greatest coaches ever? Like there's there's different ways people manage their programs and their guys. Um, JT called me from the bus in summer ball. I think it was after his freshman year. He's like, Dad, I got drilled in the head. There wasn't really a trainer. I don't know what's wrong. And I called, I called Hart. I said, Hart, where are you guys? I said, we're in Louisville, Kentucky. Coming, we're in Louisville coming back from the Taylor Swift concert. My daughter was 16th birthday. So we're driving back from Louisville. He's on this bus. He took 94 to the head for the second or third time. And I'm like, let me call Coach Avent. Hart calls Elliot. Elliot calls me. He's like, where are they? Where's the bus? I'm like, Coach, they were playing in Wilson. I guess they're – I think they're on their way back from Wilson to Holly Springs. He's like, I got this. He pull, He tracks this bus down in his SUV, pulls the bus – he gets his SUV over and, and, like, pulls the bus off the side <laughs> of the highway and – the two young guys doing this, I don't think they were aware that JT even was back there all banged up, like as bad as he was. Elliot grabs him off the bus, takes him to the hospital. We get back from the concert right to Raleigh. He's in the ER with JT. He's going to be okay. He got hit in the head. I stopped the bus. I pulled him off the bus. I got him here. Our trainer's coming. He's checked in. Where's your wife? How's it? I, it's the most <laughs> unbelievable stuff. My wife was leaving a game. When he was playing, she would drive over from Greensboro and she's leaving and gets rear-ended at an intersection right off campus, smashed from behind. Calls JT. JT goes into Avent, says, Coach, um, is it okay if I skip the tarp? My my mom got in a little accident down the road. What? Go, go. So JT like drives down the road. I mean, she got, you know, doinked in the in the back. They say they're sitting there for two or three minutes, and here comes the same SUV. It, like, barrels into the intersection, stops traffic. He's in his uniform. He's grabbing the, the fender. Are you going to make it? Is this thing okay? Where are the police? Are you all right? Is your neck okay? What are we going to do? Should Do you need a ride to Greensboro? It's just, like, those things that you look back on, that's what I'm thinking about here um the omaha stuff those guys getting removed from the college world series my son being right in the middle of it like i can't tell you what those five years are like so when you're asking me what it's like when they walk in i i don't know how many people have gone through that on his side of it or my side of it and pretty cool so um that <laughs> i could go on and on but but that's what elliot has done for him and my family and Jen when I was all over the map. Like I was never around. So that was home away for from home for him. We got time for one more for late. How about that? You didn't know you were getting all that today. <laughs> Steven, can I just uh, ask a question that would be remiss of us not showing our journalistic chops, Coach, if we didn't ask you whether or not the uh whether or not the guys got their McFlurries before last week. Oh yeah. I had to take charge of that one. We we could not get McDonald's to answer the phone. I called about 25 times. Finally, somebody <laughs> answered. Um, lo and behold, it actually worked. Sometimes these places are hesitant to make 50 McFlurries or whatever it is, because if you don't show up, you know, is this some sort of joke? But I convinced them this was serious stuff. Um, so after practice, we whipped in – to the McDonald's near the hotel and they had, they had the Oreo ones were already made, I think, weren't they? And then we had to get the M&M. They were dumping the M&Ms in. Um, it was going so fast that they couldn't use that spoon and swirl it down in there. So it was more like a, a topping, but we pulled it off. Sean, director of ops. I, I wanted to take this one myself and I let him handle everything else, but we, we pulled it off. 
It was Anna at McDonald's in Raleigh. She got this done for us. You you won that can, series. Can, Is that a I thing can, now? I can, I, by the way, I can verify everything he just said. <laughs> yeah, Lulu was – he was pushing people out of the way in line there when he, passing them out. Um, yeah, no, we – I'll keep doing it. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep doing it. Um, it's kind of neat on the road to do that, just to break up the monotony. the monotony of what you've gone through when you've played 40-something games and you're beat it up and guys are tired. It's just stuff like that's fun. It's fun for me. It's it's fun for them. Um, and it it was just a good change of pace. Okay. Thanks, Link. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Link. <laughs> That's great. We'll wrap this up here. <clears throat>